I've got most of the stuff in my house for free or at least broken even on the purchase. Wanna know how I do it? I'm sharing my 15 ways I get everything for free today. Welcome to Modern Frugality. My name is Jen. I'm a personal finance writer and expert, and I'm here to help you save money so that you can stick to your budget and reach your financial goals. If you're a subscriber, thanks for hanging out. Click that thumbs up button if this is more of what you want to see. And if you're not a subscriber, click that button in the lower right hand corner or wherever you see it and subscribe to the channel. So there are 15 ways that I primarily get everything I need for free. Don't worry about writing them all down. I have a free PDF download of the list in the description. So real quick, hit that link and get the PDF and then come back and listen to how I use all of them. The first way that I get everything for free is to simply ask for it. It's the easiest way to get what you want is if there's something you need, don't waste time looking for it. Ask somebody if they have one they wanna get rid of. Or if you don't know if you'll need it permanently and you just wanna try it out, ask somebody to borrow something. We have borrowed air mattresses, kayaks, pressure washers, and then given them back, no harm, no foul. Usually people are more than willing to get rid of something they don't need or maybe don't know if they need, but if a friend's asking for it, that might push them over the edge to get rid of it. Or if they just have something laying around that they don't use a lot, then they'll let you borrow it. And you can ask via a text message or a local Facebook group. Usually I just ask on Facebook if somebody has something that I wanna borrow. Next is local Facebook groups and events. Local interest or buy, sell, trade groups are great places to find free stuff. My favorite is a mom's group that hosts a swap every month, and I've gotten a lot of baby stuff for free that way, and I'm able to get rid of stuff that I no longer need. Travis browses buy-sell groups and looks for people posting their post-garage sale free items, and he finds a lot of great stuff that way. The next one kind of ties into this because a lot of people will post their stuff in a group and they will also post it on Facebook Marketplace. You can find way more than just low cost items to buy and I love Facebook Marketplace for that, but you also find a lot of free items. Travis has gotten a free riding lawn mower, free fence panels, a free bed frame that we used on our Airbnb and made over $18,000 with. We got that stuff for free. And people will also on Sunday afternoons and Saturday afternoons post what they have left at their garage sales that they're giving away for free. We have made a lot of weekend afternoon trips to people's houses to pick through their unwanted stuff. Fourth is buy nothing groups. The Buy Nothing Project is a global organization promoting the sharing economy. And they're most prevalent as groups on Facebook where local communities will get together and post when they have something they no longer need. I got so much baby stuff while I was pregnant on the Buy Nothing group. I got a crib for free. It's also how I got all my maternity clothes. And it was mostly just porch pickup, so I could go whenever I wanted, pick it up off the porch, and leave. It was contactless, it was safe, and it was a way to get free stuff, what I wanted, when I needed it. I'm gonna put a link to the Buy Nothing Project in the description so that you can find your local Buy Nothing group. We have a really active group in our area, but that's not the case with all areas. So if you want an active Buy Nothing group, you may have to start one or be the change you wanna see in your group. So it's not just about taking, it's also about offering. So whenever we have stuff we wanna get rid of, I always post the good stuff in the Buy Nothing group before I take it to the thrift store. Fifth is next to dumpsters. This is the best one on the list, guys. So if this is as far as you make it, you have gotten a lot out of this video. Next to dumpsters and in alleyways is a gold mine for free stuff. A lot of people will post these finds 
on Marketplace, but sometimes you just have to be willing to stop when you see something on the side of the road and inspect it. Sometimes it's inconvenient, so and it, a lot of the times it feels awkward, but if you go and inspect something, you could find a treasure. We got a vacuum that we used for five years next to a dumpster at my old apartment. Travis found a really comfy recliner that we still use to this day next to a dumpster and the reclining mechanism was broken, but it was a really quick and easy fix. So when you find things next to dumpsters, a lot of the times they'll need a little fixing. So evaluate whether you are capable of fixing it or you can find somebody that will do it for free. But one thing that won't need fixing that you can find next to a dumpster is grocery store food. A lot of grocery stores will put expired food out next to their dumpsters because people come by and take it. And you don't have to dumpster dive for food anymore. I've never done that. I probably wouldn't do that. And most dumpsters are under lock and key. But we recently just found a public shopping cart full of bread next to our grocery store's dumpster. And so we got a loaf of sourdough, some Italian bread, some cookies, all kinds of things for free. It's worth it whenever you're driving by a grocery store. If you have time, make a quick run next to their dumpster and see if they have anything out next to it. You have nothing to lose and you don't have to worry about diving through trash to get the good stuff. Number six is time banks. So time banks are in a lot of major cities. They're essentially trading time as currency. So something I've done is offered financial counseling services for an hour. And so when I offer one of those, then I have an hour in the time bank and I can get an hour from something else. Say I needed somebody to work on my car and that took an hour. Then I can trade in my hour for that service. So this is a great way to get specialized services or just general around the house services for free. I will also post the link to find your local time bank in the description. Again, this is one, if it's not active in your community, you might have to start it, but it's well worth the effort. Time banks can be really helpful for specialized services. Seven is negotiating. This is another one of my favorite, favorite things to do. And I'm not even a great negotiator, but it's a way to get the most bang for your buck with free. When you have a new job and you get a salary offer, negotiate it. My last salary offer, I got 5,000 extra dollars per year for free. It just took a little effort of me saying, this salary is not good enough. This is what I think I'm worth. It took a little bit more than that, but essentially that's what it was. And the last time we rented, we really wanted to lower our rent, but the landlord wouldn't budge. So we negotiated in utility costs to be included. So we saved a little money there just because we did a little negotiating. So there's always something that can be negotiated and there's right and wrong ways to do it. But if you're kind and you're smart and you're fact-based, then you can usually get a little something for free by negotiating. Eighth is Craigslist. Surprisingly, people still use Craigslist and they still use the free section. So with everybody flocking to Facebook Marketplace and other apps, then sometimes Craigslist can be a really good place to find hidden gems. Uh, that don't have a lot of competition. It's not a gold mine, but every once in a while you'll find something that's really good. Next is OfferUp. It's probably my favorite of the reselling apps, the local reselling apps. Um, it's always got something for free or somebody posting their yard sale. And so if you see a yard sale, it's a really good chance they'll have leftovers that maybe you can get free stuff after. And again, like Craigslist, it's not a gold mine, but sometimes you can find something there that's maybe not posted on Facebook Marketplace and maybe get it before it's posted on Facebook Marketplace. 10 is saving and rebate apps. I did a video on my favorite money saving apps, and this is a way I use to get free money. 
I use these apps enough to get their free welcome bonuses, and I will post those welcome bonuses and those links in the description, and then I'm done with them. I don't waste a lot of time on low-hanging fruit, rebate, receipt, scanning apps. It's just not worth my time, but that welcome bonus is worth my time. So every time there's a new savings app, I get the bonus, and then I get out and I move to the next one. It's the same with credit cards. I get welcome bonuses and then I move on to the next card. And it's like getting free money. And everybody loves free money. 11 is surveys. So you'll see surveys on a lot of making money videos and blog posts. And I think surveys are a horrible way to make money. It's not lucrative, not worth your time at all. But if you have extra time where you can't be working, it's way better to get on a survey site and get some free stuff than to be scrolling down Facebook. So I use Swagbucks to get free gift cards. And usually I can get a free gift card every month. I've been doing it for a really long time, so I've accumulated a lot. And the gift card I do get is like a $25 gift card and it's 13% off. So I'm not even using the full 2,500 swag bucks to get the gift card. It's usually way under. And I do that once a month because you can only use that discount once a month and, and I keep doing it. So that's probably my favorite one to get free gift cards. 12th is email lists. Usually unsubscribing from email lists is a way to save money and I super love that idea, but you can set up a filter in Gmail to filter out all of the newsletters that have the word free in them and you can put them all in one place. So whenever somebody has something for free, you can just look at those emails and you can ignore all of the other ones. I'll post a link in the description on how to set up that filter, but it's awesome. So whenever Chick-fil-A has something for free, I'm on it. Whenever my birthday freebie emails come in, I got them. It's a really great way to compartmentalize that and you can still avoid all the sale emails and only see when they're offering something for free. 13 is the library. I think a major roadblock to people sticking to their budget is just not having enough to do. You get bored, so you go to happy hour or you go to a restaurant or you spend money on a movie, but the library can fix that problem. It's got a ton of free games, movies, CDs, books, audiobooks. Yeah, Hoopla, awesome app, tons of audiobooks. And they have a lot of other stuff too, like mine has free museum tickets. So we can go to a museum at least once a month for free because we have so many in our area. And they're always having free events. We go to a baby time event um, on Fridays where all the little babies get together and sing songs. So it's really cool. Otherwise, I'd probably be driving Kai around in the car, stopping through Starbucks just to get him out of the house. But with the library, we can go and have some free fun and it's to, if it's in our budget. 14 is home chemical collection centers. So you're not supposed to throw away household chemicals in your garbage. So most counties or cities will have a place where residents can drop theirs off for correct disposal. Something else a lot of them will do is they will put them in a collection center swap shop or redistribution center. Um, I call, I've heard it called chem again. Uh, that's probably my favorite. We call ours a swap shop. But they will put those chemicals in this shop and so residents can come in and take what they need for free. And all you have to do usually is show your license to make sure you live in that county. So it's a great way you can get paint, um, spray paint. We've gotten lawn fertilizer, uh, household cleaning chemicals, anything that you should not dispose of into the garbage, you can find at one of these collection centers. So the best way to find out if you have one is to search for home chemical collection center and usually it'll show you the closest one to you. And this last one does cost a smidge of money up front, 
but it is so worth it because you get reimbursed and oftentimes make a little money and it's mystery shopping. I love mystery shopping. We will do a mystery shop usually at least once a month. We did it way more when we were paying off debt, but it's a way to go to restaurants, have some fun. Maybe we've done roller skating, we've done mini golf. Uh, you can get reimbursed for the costs associated with these tasks. So all you have to do at the end is write up a little survey. It usually takes about an hour and all you do is you go through and you mark like yes or no on all these questions and then you write a narrative at the bottom and you're literally just going through each of the questions and restating what you already wrote. It's pretty redundant, but I'm okay with it because I just got my dinner at Seasons 52 for free. I will post a link to the article on my website on how to become a mystery shopper in the description so that you can learn how to do it for yourself. Again, I've got a link in the description for you to get the whole PDF download for free. So click on that and it'll also have the links that I mentioned uh, in the PDF. Thanks for watching. If you love to save money and get free stuff, please subscribe to the channel. I will have more of this coming at you every single week.